saints, open up your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. And you will find these recorded words in chapter 13 of the book of Jeremiah. If anyone needs healing, it's from the word. The word will prepare us. See, before one can go to surgery, they have to be prepped and prepared. Word is preparing us for the greater blessing. Oh, his word is the blessing to my soul. Follow along with me, saints of God, beginning at verse number one, chapter 13 of the book of Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord unto me, go and get thee a linen girdle and put it upon thy loins. And put it not in water. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord and put it on my loins. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time. Saints say the second time. Saying, Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise. Go to Euphrates and hide it there in a hole of the rock. So I went and hid it by Euphrates as the Lord commanded me. In verse 6, saints, read please. Then I went to Euphrates and digged and took the girdle from the place where I had hid it. And behold, the girdle was marred. It was profitable for nothing. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. Verse 11, let's read together. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory, but they would not hear. Let the church say amen. amen. My God, I praise God for the reading of his holy word. Saints, for our New Testament scripture, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. That is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, and we will begin reading at verse number 14. That is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, beginning at verse 14. But read responsibly down through to chapter 7 and verse 1. When you have the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, respond by saying amen. amen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And verse 1 of chapter 7 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, 
Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let the church say amen. amen. We praise God for the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. And I don't know about you, but as you read the word, God is feeding you the word. His spirit on the inside is leaping for joy because it is glad to make contact with the word. And saints, this evening's message is stay close to Jesus. Stay close to Jesus. A girdle is type or of accessory that is used to keep other garments close or items close to the individual wearing it. It is basically a belt and it's wrapped around one's waist or loin area and it's Purpose is to provide a type of tightness or closeness so that the garments are held in place. And God, he spoke a parable. He used an illustration. And the parable is basically an earthly story or earthly illustration used to teach a divine truth or biblical principle. And God used this girdle as an example to let his people know that I want you to remain close to me. I made you a people for a purpose, that I might be a father unto you, that I might dwell in you, walk with you. God desires fellowship with his people. And he wants us as his children to make an effort to remain close to him. God is un invisible. We cannot see him, yet we can feel his presence. And the Lord provided a way that he might allow a people who were afar off a people who were separated, a people who were defiled and unclean. He made it possible that we can draw close to him by his precious blood, by the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial and resurrection provided a way out and a way in. A way out of our unclean condition and a way in to a holy place with God. And once God brings you in to that holy place, he does it by the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that brings you into a oneness with God. We were a people who were in darkness, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, brought us out of darkness and brought us in to his marvelous light. It was the light of 
his spirit that shined in our soul. And I'm so glad that once God brings you out of darkness, you don't want to go back. Once God cleaned you up and gave you a fresh new start, now it's up to you to remain clean. And in order to do that, we have to keep ourselves separated from the unclean thing. The life that we used to live, the pleasures that we used to enjoy, the things that we used to do that kept us separated from God, we must not go back and pick up those things once again. Because when God brings us to a place that's close to him, oh, you want to stay close. Because that's where his joy is. That's where his peace is. That's where understanding of his word is. But when we touch the unclean thing or associate ourselves with the unclean thing, we distance ourselves from the joy and the peace provided by God. God, he put the responsibility on his children where he said, you must come out. When I bring you out, it's up to you to stay out. Come out from among the things that are undefiled, the things that are contrary to my word. Why? Because your association with those unclean things are causing distance from me. I can't get close to you because I cannot abide in an unclean vessel. And so it is our responsibility, saints of God, to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness oh that this flesh so desires this flesh wants to be like the world this flesh has an appetite for the things of the world but when the Holy Ghost comes in he gives you a new appetite for spiritual things and the more your appetite for spiritual things increase your appetite for the carnal worldly things will decrease. But in contrast, if we continue to feed the flesh and appetite for the fleshly things, the carnal things will increase and the appetite for spiritual things will decrease. And when our appetite for spiritual things decrease, our availability to God will decrease. Our hunger and making time for God's word will decrease. And instead of making ourselves available to God's table, we are making ourselves available to everything else but God's table. God, he's a good God, saints. So God had to speak and send a word to this prophet by the name of Jeremiah. And he let him know, I want you to take this linen girdle and I want you to put it upon your loins. See, God has a girdle today and it is his word. He said, to gird up your loins with truth. My God, wrap it around you. Let it walk with you. Let it talk with you. Can you stay close to the word and distance yourself from the world? Today, many have the world wrapped around them. Hallelujah. And God can't get close to you like he would like to because the unclean thing is all around you. And instead of you coming out from the unclean thing, it's pulling you in. 
pulling you further and further away from God. God wants to cleave with his people, which means to draw close, to stay close. But yet his people have made a choice. God does not force himself upon us, but we must force ourselves upon him. Oh, we must have a desire and a hunger. Lord, I want to get close to you. Well, when the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, I'm sure he might have thought that this was strange. But yet he obeyed the word of the Lord. And as he did what God had commanded him to do, the Bible said the word of the Lord came to him a second time. God, he's a wonderful God. And when you follow the command of God and make one step, by faith, God, he will order your second step. And when we obey his word, we open up ourselves that God might continue to guide us and open up his word unto us. This is what it means by walking with God. You're walking by faith. You don't know when the next commandment is going to come, but by faith, Lord, I'm going to take that second step because you were with me in the first step. It's obedience that keeps us close to God. It's obedience that allows God to walk with us. We must not order our own steps, but Lord, every step I take, Lord, let your word guide me. Let your word lead me. Well, he told Jeremiah, I want you to take this girdle, this linen girdle, and I want you to hide it. Go down to the rivers of Euphrates. And there's a hole in a rock. Put it there. And he did that which God had commanded him to do. And it says, after many days, after many days, period of time had gone by. And Jeremiah was told to go and retrieve that girdle that he hid in a rock. And when he saw the girdle, it was not in the same condition as it was when he had left it. For it was marred. And the period of time, the more time that we spend with God in prayer, praise, and word, he keeps us clean. And he keeps us close. But the more time in between visits with God, we will find ourselves becoming defiled and unclean. Because the time that we spend even right now in his word, he's washing us. He's cleansing us. His word has a purging effect within our souls. Ah, you should be able to feel this word. My God moving in your soul. And when God said, I have a church that I'm going to present to myself. Hallelujah, I'm washing it. I'm sanctifying it by the word. The only way we can remain clean is by the word. Because when Jesus he comes back for his church. He says it's going to be a glorious church. Not having spot, nor wrinkle, or any such thing. Hallelujah. It's not going to be marred. It's not going to be blemished. It's not a perfect church or a perfect people, but it's a people that remain close to God. Remain close to Jesus by the word. Hallelujah, where they can feel the touch from God. You have to be close to God to feel his touch. You have to be close to someone to, to feel their presence. 
Well, as long as we allow ourselves to be clean and undefiled, God said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to sup with you. I'm going to dwell with you. Oh, Lord, I'm going to be a father of God to you, and you're going to yet be my people. Well, as they saw this girdle as being marred, Jeremiah said it was profitable for nothing. Why? Because the condition of this girdle has changed. God did the work and when he filled you with the Holy Ghost, he cleaned you up. But you have allowed yourself to fall back into the filthiness and the unclean life that God has delivered you from. And so not only has your condition changed, but you have lost your value. That which is good for nothing is worthless. But yet, when you stay close to God, he said, the trine of your faith is much more precious than gold. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and the glory of Jesus Christ at his appearing. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when... Uh, a jewel, a diamond, is, has flaws in it. It does not cease to be a diamond, but it loses its value. And the more flawless or undefiled the diamond is, the more valuable it is. Well, when we allow ourselves to remain unclean, saying we lose our value and we lose, use our purpose or our usefulness for God. Because God said that this girdle is good for nothing, it's unprofitable. I can't use it because it has defiled itself. It is unclean. And before we can be used by God, hallelujah, in a spiritual way, we must make sure we remain clean, not on the outside, but on the inside. Because anyone can profess, oh Lord, and sing unto God, but God wants us to live what we sing. <laughs> it's easy to sing because you're happy. Mm, but when you walk, oh Lord, and allow God to order your steps in his word, that's what brings me joy. That's what keeps us clean. Well, God said the pride of this people has caused them to be marred. Oh Lord, pride will separate you from God, for God resisted the proud. We, have, we can have pride when we do things our own way and we reject God's way. Or we serve God conditionally on our conditions. But yet you cannot know God or Jesus except it's by the Holy Ghost. You can't reject the Holy Ghost and Say that I know God and I'm in fellowship with God. Mm -mm, because they're all one. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive God and you receive the Father, you receive the Son. Oh Lord, and they all, all of them have one name. Mm, and that's the name of Jesus. Oh, he's a good God. Well, God did not call this people his People, he called them an evil people. And yet, God did not reject them. They rejected God. By their actions, they refused to hear the word. Hallelujah. Yes, they may sit in the congregation, but yet the word is falling on deaf ears. 
Because you can hear the word, but if you're not obeying the word, oh Lord, it's all in vain. And when God spoke a word to them, they walked in the imagination of their heart. Basically, they did it their way, thinking that God is going to change his ways for them or make provisions or exemptions, hallelujah, for his people. Mm -mm. Uh, the word, same word applies to all of God's people. We have to walk in the same path, oh Lord, that God has given unto us. There is no new way. His way is holiness. Yes, hallelujah. And he said they walked after other gods. See, when we put things and make things more important than we do God, those things become our God. Yes, we have a lot of important things in our lives, but if Christ is not the most important thing, you will just neglect him and put him aside and you make time when you get ready. But yet, saints, when Jesus is most important, everything else revolves around him. Oh God, I can't go throughout the day without making contact and having fellowship with Jesus. You can't let too much time go by without Hallelujah, talking to Jesus and dining from his holy word. He's a good God. Not only did they serve them, but they worshiped them. And shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. But God, he said, for as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel. Look what God has done and he made a way that we can draw close to him. But this people and many today, oh, they make a choice. Yes, I want to come to church, but I don't want to come to Jesus. Ah, I want to hear the word, but I don't want to obey the word. Oh, Lord, and you're going to find yourself drifting further and further away from God rather than drawing closer. But God says there is a people that I want to be unto me, O oh Lord, that they might belong to me. And God's people, they're a holy people. Not a perfect people, but yet they're close enough that, yes, to feel his presence. That, they have a mind that, not to defile themselves that, from the unclean thing. That, hallelujah, there are people that, for a name. That, there's only one name that, above every name. That, his name is Jesus. That, and when you identify that, with Jesus Christ, that, you identify him that, in death, that, his burial, that, and his resurrection. That, when the Holy Ghost that, resurrect you that, from your grave of sin, that, you now have the name that, which is above every name. That, and when, amen, that, the preacher baptize you that, in the name that, of Jesus, that, you rise up and walk that, in the brand new life. That, you walk away that, from that old life of sin that, and you walk into that, this new life that, of joy and peace. That, I have a people that, that might be found that, 
for praise. Not just singing a praise, but God wants you to live a praise, to hold on to God during difficult times and keep yourself unspotted from the world that's a praise unto God he's worthy of the praise how can I bring glory to my father he said don't compromise and let down my word for no one you lift me up and I'm going to lift you up all glory and praise belong to God and when you keep yourself clean separated I don't do what everyone else is doing but I'm drawn close to my Jesus when you separate from the world you separate from the crowd because the crowd is on the Broadway and there are many on the Broadway as a matter of fact that's where Jesus found me and I'm glad he pulled me off the Broadway that's the way that leadeth unto death but thank God I once was dead in my sins but Jesus Jesus he filled me with life by the Holy Ghost and you that he quickened uh, who were dead uh, in trespasses uh, and sins uh, I'm glad uh, I'm no longer dead uh, but Jesus uh, is alive uh, in me uh, I can feel uh, the fire burning uh, in my soul uh, and I'm waiting uh, I'm waiting uh, Till he come back and come in that rock. And I want him to find me holy, undefiled, that I might draw closer to him. He's a good God. The Lord spoke a word about some of those that had a talent. The parable of the talents. A man, he assigned talents to his servants. He gave one five and two and one see when God entrusts you with the treasure of the Holy Ghost you better make sure you make a profit you make an increase you increase in joy and not go backwards but go forward in his word and the one that had five he increased he was profitable and he gained five more the one two he gained two more but the one that had one he yet remained one see God he left and gave him one thing he came back and he yet found him not the same but he called that one unprofitable my God that Jesus that he's gone away that but he's coming back again that and you want that when he comes to find you that somewhere that holding on that to 
his word that somewhere that lifting up that his name that somewhere that walking that in the path of holiness that the one who had five that and the one that had two that he said well done that well done that that good that and faithful servant that you were faithful that over a few that I'm gonna give you more that I'm gonna give you more that saints of God that be faithful that to God's word that God has a reward that waiting for you that it's a crown that that cannot be corrupted that it's eternal crown that of glory that well done that that good that and faithful servant that come on up and draw closer to me and I enter in and I to the joy and I of the Lord. And I, the joy and I is good down here. And I, but there's and I, a greater joy and I, we're going to enter in and I, when we hear well done. And I, but the one and I, who is lazy, and I, the one and I, who drifted away from God, and I, the one and I, who neglected the word that God said cast them into outer darkness that there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth my God he was separated from God eternally saints of God you better hold on hold on to this Holy Ghost it's the only joy we have it's a good joy it's a greater joy and the Lord he's soon to come I want to be ready when he come back again I said I want to be ready I want to be found somewhere I want to be found somewhere oh Lord holding on to Jesus walking in his word that no one knows that the day no hour that when he come back again that but when he find you that you better hope that he's now find you that marred that and unclean that find you that in the bar that find you that fornicating that find you that undefiled that Oh, you better hold on to this word and walk in holiness because you don't know when he's coming back again. Many feel as if they can live anywhere they want and make it in at the end. You don't know when the end going to be. That's why I'm so glad, God, that no one knows me, my father. Hallelujah. But he let us know you just keep making preparations. You keep making sure you're being washed. You keep making sure to smooth out every wrinkle. Hallelujah. Remove every spot by my word. It's what's on the inside that God sees. When it's clean on the inside, it will manifest on the outside. Because there are many that hear the word and going to come to God in that last day and say, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. Lord, we've done many wonderful works in your name. They profess all these things. God said, I never knew you. You never were close to me. Religion don't bring you close. The Holy Ghost does. You better make sure you receive it the right way, the Bible way, and hold on to it by walking in his word. Oh, I thank God when you preach and teach separating from the world, you won't draw a crowd because people are in love with the world. They associate with the world. They identify with the world. Yet Jesus says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All that is in the world, 
lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, that's of the world. So it's saying to me, you got to fall out of love with the world and fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with his word. His word, saints of God, is going to not pass away. This earth and this world will pass away. My purpose is heavenly. We can get so sidetracked with all of our earthly responsibility that we begin to neglect what our purpose is. And that is eternal redemption and salvation with God. We must not get too busy and too sidetracked where we get too busy for God. Hallelujah. We visit him every now and then. And see, the time apart from God is just causing that soul to be defiled. You need to get this word as often as we can. You need to be cleansed and purged. When you go back out in the world, you'll be ready to represent God in a holy way. Come back and, Lord, replenish my soul, replenish my spirit. Oh, build me up that I can go out. Hallelujah. And represent you in the right way. But the less word we get and receive, the less strength we have to hold on and lift up the standard of God. He's a good God, saints. I thank him for his word. Keep me clean, Lord, through your word. Keep me holy by your word. Hallelujah. He's a good God. I thank him and I praise him. And we know God has a greater blessing waiting for us. And his word just prepares us for the greater blessing. When praise.